Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 6 of Being SpaceX, and I'm actually going to go to the moon this episode, um, that's the plan, um, or at least, you know, do some orbital stuff, because I tried it a bit last episode, didn't go great, the first manned mission I tried, um, ended in me punching out before I was even out of the atmosphere, so aborting and stuff, um, and then the second attempt with a probe kind of hit the moon, kind of quite hard, kind of not really in the mission, but anyway, we're going back with basically the same thing, with a few more solar panels and a few more bells and whistles. Um, pretty expensive, but I'm doing pretty well for money right now. It would be quite cool if they implemented, like, um, like real-world stuff. So, like, at first you have loads of money and you can do stuff, and then you make a shuttle program, and then you have no money, and you have to pay SpaceX to do all your stuff. Yeah, that's my insight into space. Anyway, this is Hawk 2, because Hawk 1 hit the moon, and this is slightly improved. Um, I'm starting to doing this thing where I spin and release the fairings because it looks cool or something. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, this has more solar panels, um, slightly moved stuff, I guess. Um, and we'll hopefully uh, manage to fling this around the moon and just be more smart about it, really. The satellite network is actually surprisingly good. I have got some plans for some um, precision satellites that will sit in the perfect geosynchronous orbit, so they will not go out of... Um, well, they don't even have to be in perfect geosynchronous orbits, they just have to be synchronized with each other. So they don't do, do this thing where they group up. Because I only need three satellites, but um, I'm not very smart, so I didn't do it particularly well. Um, I'm kind of finagling with a lot of things, but I just need high-altitude science, because that's in the mission directive. So I do that, and then I can just do a little burn, just go kind of a bit near the moon, and I won't need any fuel to fly back, so... Uh, just position myself right and everything's fine. Um, yeah, so I might have to do a couple of orbits because I might run out of, well, um, I think I'll still be in comms range because those lower satellites are giving me pretty good communications actually, it's working out surprisingly well. However, I decided to point these um, uh, kind of um, uh, single direction um, panels at, uh, and panels, um, antennas at things anyway. However, that eats up all of my electric charge because I'm on the dark side of the planet. So I decide um, I won't um, use that maneuver node, I'll go around another orbit and just wait. Um, because the moon's always going to be there. Um, moon on Mars, however, um, Deimos, I believe, it's either Phobos or... No, it's Deimos. In 40 million years, it will, um, its orbit will decay and it will crash into Mars. So maybe don't go there for um, living forever. But it's a good step. If you go to Mars, I mean, obviously in 40 million years, we could hopefully be more technologically advanced. Um, so that we can go on to other places, and we'll probably have to forget about Mars after 40 million years, unless we want to, you know, deflect a moon. Um, but we could probably just move it. We're going to move an asteroid. 40 million years from now, I mean, you would just freaking move it. Yeah, it's really easy to move a moon, obviously. Deimos is pretty small. Um, anyway, we should probably go to the moon now. Um, yeah, those low-orbit satellites are doing quite a good job, actually, because they have a pretty good range, um, and they kind of cover everything. If I put a few more of them up, and some decent geosynchronous ones that stay in the right orbit, because I'll give them some RCS, then I think everything will be fine. Um, I'm hoping, but who knows. Uh, anyway, this is just a flyby mission of the moon, as I probably haven't said, but it's probably quite obvious. Um, so I'm just going to fly by the moon, grab some science, return to Kerbin, and... Uh, Everything will be dandy. Um, this does have a heat shield on it. I mean, I could transmit the data. Although I'm not actually sure that I can, because Remote Tech has a weird thing with the uh, antennas, but apparently it's being worked on again properly. Because I'm just using a patch right now, um, but apparently they're working on the mod properly again, so I should be able to get that up and running. Um, although there's a lot of problems, like Tech Life Support, I upgraded that, and it just fucked up all my stuff. I could probably upgrade it on this, but Solar Civilization, I'd have to do some more work with it. I'd have to change some stuff myself and anyway um back to the you know, i'll just i'll figure that out tech life support's being annoying right now anyway i need to make sure some satellites are pointed at the right things um because i'm about to lose my one on the far side of kerbin and i'm about to get this one back um so i've pointed that one and there we go because you can see the one just went out of range but now they're both back in range and will stay in range um when i'm going around the moon and i have quite a bit of delta v left because this small fuel tank and this little engine i mean it's only a small fuel tank, but it's more than enough to go around the moon. Anyway, I'll just grab the materials bay, um, because this isn't so much about the science, it's more about just getting the mission done, because I'm a big government man, and I do what the government tells me, because they're the ones with the money. Um, that sounded like I was trying to make a point about something, but I wasn't. I was just, you know, saying, Kerbal government's kind of oppressive. Um, we're beating the Kerbal Russians to the moon, that's all they care about. 
Actually, I did hear that um, in the early days of Apollo, they, the scientists had to really campaign to get any science aboard um, some of the Apollo spacecraft because uh, it was just really more of a race and saying, look, my missiles are better than yours, Russia. Um, anyway, I'm getting a little worried because I'm about to lose comms with everything. And yeah, see, I have no comms now because yeah, I can't get to mission control because two of the satellites that were supposed to be talking to each other aren't because I keep changing them around. Um, but I get comms again, but that's going to fade out again. Um, so I'm thinking I've got to either finagle myself some communication downlink or hope that um, I get it as I enter the atmosphere. So, uh, yeah, um, that didn't work, as you'll see, because that's not actually pointed at comsat 1, 2. Um, this is... So I'm trying to figure these things out and just trying to get things pointed in the right direction. But this one isn't pointing at the um, at that other satellite, so I can't actually make it point at it because I have no communications. It's really annoying. If it's not pointed at the satellite, you can't get communications to it. And that means you can't make new communications. It's very confusing. So I am going to just put up a new satellite network, which will be better than this one because I didn't plan this one very well or just even think about it at all. So, um, yeah, um, we'll just, but I do have comms back now with my omnidirectional communications. Um, I am a little worried it will blow off in, well, blow off, it'll, like, be torn off by, um, the atmospheric re-entry, but it shouldn't be, but it is, as, yeah, there you go, it goes there, and it just falls off. I think it's just because of stresses, and I didn't understand it properly, but that was kind of annoying. Um, I should have just transmitted that data, really, uh. But anyway, so I have no communications with this, so I can't pull the parachute because my only antenna left... No, I have... I only have the... Uh, the I, well, I don't have any communication, so it's going to slam into the floor, basically. And I'm going to lose all that science. And I'm not going to get my mission directive. So this is another waste of money. But this did get to the moon. Uh, it's just going to crash into a different planet, um, which is kind of annoying. So this was another failed mission. I'm having trouble with this. It's because of remote tech, really. I'm not used to it. But I will get used to it, and everything will be fine. Anyway, that slams into the moon. And I'm going to get some more missions, because I want to do some stuff. I've got an Explore Duna there. I don't, I'm not ready for that, but I'll get it at some point. I'm going to get Explore Minmus, because I want to be doing that. And there's these things, which are very cool. But they expire never, so I won't get them right now. But, um... Because I'll probably spend all the advance money and be like, Damn, now I need to go to Duna. But I'll, I'll get them at some point. Oh, God. Someone Facebook messaging me. Um... Uh, one second, I'm very sorry. There we go. I'm awful at this. Um, anyway, so I'll just grab a few more of these things. I want to do some testing on the ground. Um, yeah, what am I looking at? Oh, and I want to get plant a flag on the moon. That'd be very cool. Um, and it gives me two years to do it. Oh my god! Um, sorry. I'll cut, I won't cut that out because I was talking through it, but okay, now it won't be doing anything again. It won't be blipping up with Facebook. Um... Yeah, I, what was I talking about? Okay, yeah, so I've got a few um, things that'll pay me and give me some science to do to, some tests, because I want some more science. Um, so I've got a lander idea just to test on Kerbin and get science and money. And this is what it is. It's going to test a decoupler and those l launch struts. Um, so deploy the legs, because if I fall really hard, I want to not break this, because it's very expensive. Um... Oh, it started to rain. There'll be so much background noise. Anyway, I've already completed... Oh, God, weather, eat a dick. Um, anyway, I completed one of the missions, um, but you'll see I won't... I'll fail to complete the other mission in this because I didn't read the um, small print, basically. Um, wow, it's really started raining really hard. God, so many distractions in this video. I clicked decouple. I should have done it through staging. That's what it wanted me to do. Um, so, yeah. I didn't get that one, because look, to perform this test, activate the part through the staging sequence when all test conditions are met, I just did it through the um, action group, th not the action group, the um, context menu. But I did complete the one for the stability enhancers, so I got 14 science and a little bit of money, so that's nice. Um, but anyway, I'll just do that quickly again and get more science and more money for testing the decoupler. I'm having to really speak over this rain. Um, there's not really much I can do about that. You can blame British weather. Um, and decouple that. And now I got more science. And it's 48 science and 500 funds. Not that I need the funds. But anyway, um, yeah. And it tested landing. And landing is very important if you're going to go anywhere. Because you've got to not stay in orbit. 
Oh, my window's slightly open and it's coming in, but I can't stop commentating. Anyway, that's a hundred science. Um, well, well, I think it's not actually a hundred science, but in total I have 1.3 science. So I'm going to get this RCS stuff um, so that my satellites can maintain proper orbits and not slip out and cause my probes to hit the ground, because that is very annoying when that happens. Um, I do want some bigger rockets um, and stuff, but I'll, I'll also need a few other things. So. Screw it, I'm gonna send a man to the moon. I've sent two probes now, and they haven't gone great, so I'm just gonna send Jeb up there, and he'll get everything done fine. Um, yeah, this is a new rocket. It's using some KW, engi uh, some KW engines and some uh, KW fuel tanks, look, which look quite nice. And the top stage is the same one that was on the probe, I think. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty nice rocket. I am, well, I'm rather, well, not proud of it, but, uh, I, but I guess I'm a little proud of it. It's a small rocket, I can go to the moon. You really don't need much fuel to go to the moon. Um, it's really easy. If you know what you're doing, that is. Um, and I am using ferrum aerospace, so that does make it um, a lot easier in, in terms of lift, mass to orbit, because the atmosphere is much less thick with ferrum aerospace. Um, but anyway, ditch that, and this is the craft that shall be going to the moon. You actually have seen this before. This was the one that aborted in the last video. Um, but, yeah, this one didn't abort because I'm, uh, I did this much better. Um, but I do tend to keep an abort system on here because I have it. I, this is kind of a hardcore career mode, so um, there's there is quick saving just for crashes, but there's no quick loading, no reverting, so if, uh, and no Kerbal respawn. So if they die, they're dead. Anyway, it's time to leave that stage behind. I should really start deorbiting them and go to the moon and not have to worry about stupid freaking satellites that I've planned terribly. As I say, I will um, make some better ones in. I'll make a better satellite network in the future. Probably next episode. Um, I can tell you it's not in this episode, but it might be in next episode. Who knows? But I don't want to be doing too much of that boring stuff, but I do like sending probes places. I guess if I just, like, send up a big rocket, just put everything on it, just spend a lot of money, get it perfect, then everything will be fine. Yeah, I'll just design a good network or something. Anyway, um, that's our nice little encounter with the moon. Um, basically, I, j I have loads of Delta V, so it doesn't really matter how efficiently I go back. But this isn't going to work because it's going to take 11 days to go back because I'm going prograde. So what I need to go, and I only have one day's life support. So what I need to do is go retrograde around the moon. And I, I, I how are you still? Uh, um, I am annoyed at Facebook. I muted that and it's still going on at me. Um, I'll just, hopefully he'll stop messaging me, messaging me. freaking stuff. Anyway, so yeah, if I go retrograde around the moon, um, It'll be it'll work out better because uh, because it'll take less time to get back because it'll be a retrograde trajectory which will um, not kick my Apple apps out as much. Anyway, let's take all the science we can, and I'm going to return this because I can't transmit it because um, that doesn't work as natural transmission thing. I think one of the antennas does, so I don't think it's end of the world. But I am quite annoyed um, if I can't use that to transmit science. Um, I'm probably changed the part, I guess. But still, it would be impossibly annoying if I can't use antennas to transmit stuff, because what am I going to do with probes? Freaking remote tech, bro. Bane of my life. Um, well, I do quite like the mod. I just need to learn how to use it slightly better. Um, and I'll just collect that data. Um, and do notice that I tried to take um, a temperature report, but it wouldn't let me. And when you try and take one and it doesn't let you, it doesn't give you the UI back. So unless you quick save and quick load, um, you, you don't get the UI back until you launch another mission, or whatever. And I don't have any quick loads because this is hardcore, so, um, yeah. I'm not going to be able to use that temperature scanner now close down to the um, surface of the moon. But I am going to be able to take some mystery goo, um, EVA report, and uh, materials. <clears throat> materials way down there. Sorry, I have a terrible cough. Something stuck in my throat, I'm not sure what. Um, anyway, weird frame rate drops there, no idea why. Um, but anyway, let's drop this down. This is Morpheus 1.1, because it is slightly different to the one I launched last time. Um, it's got a bigger engine on the main stage, basically. Although the main stage is long burned up in the atmosphere. Um, so let's bring ourselves down. Um, I need to be at below, I think, 25 kilometers to get low orbit science around, um, around the moon. Um, I'm quite looking forward to going to Duna at some point. Um, I have, oh yeah, I just got to Duna in a solar civilization, so if you've been following that, you'll know if you haven't. Um, 
then go watch Solar Civilization, my other KSP series. Um, I do a couple because I have lots of ideas, although it's quite hard to maintain because I need to do a Red Faction Gorilla video pretty much today as well because that's been a while since I've done one. And I do like playing that game. They are some pretty good games. I wanted to live stream more as well, but um, it's hard to actually get people to come watch the live stream because, you know, times and there's not a huge amount of people on YouTube. And people don't really watch KSP on Twitch much, unless it's like big stuff. Um, but anyway, I think I've got all this science from there. Um, now I'll slide off the ladder all derpily, because there is no physics on ladders, because, ugh, I don't know, stupid reasons. Just freaking reasons, bro. Um, but anyway, that will do fine. And now I just need to do a quick um, prograde burn and go right back to the atmospheres of Kerbin, where I will safely, um, well, hopefully safely land, because uh, I don't have to rely on freaking communications networks. Um, yeah, that was annoying. There you go. It'll only take three hours to get back, so I will not die, um, which is lucky, because not dying was one of the main directives of this mission. Um, you know, if, you, if you're into not dying, I guess. If, if that's what you want in a space program, sure. Government's all like, you can't keep killing Kerbals. I'm like, but that's like 70% of the game. Anyway, um, this is annoying. The really annoying thing about the Science Junior is um, all... You can only... You have to be within something like 1.5 meters of the middle of the parts. And um, the middle of the Mystery Goo is pretty close to the edge of the box collider, but the freaking collider, the thing that stops you, you know, this thing that stops you going into the part on the Mystery Goo is pre you have to be pretty much pressed right up against it to get that. They should really look into that or I could just change it, but I don't want to because I don't like changing things. Um, this is the classic key situation in that you have um, two keys and you put one in the lock, it doesn't open it. You put the other one in the lock and it doesn't open it. Um, but it turns out a uh, that it was in the original Mystery Goo unit, um, not the f not the second one I checked. Oh no, I don't know, I checked that one twice, basically. Just terrible. Anyway, we should probably get back in our spacecraft or we'll die, because we have no resources, um, because TAC Life Support hasn't been properly updated yet. Um, the, the problem is, they do have an update, but it doesn't upgrade any of the people in already in the ships. So I could do it for this series, actually, but um, Solar Civilization, because there's so many people doing different things. There's people on the way to EU, people landed on Duna. Oh, wait, has that been in there yet? There's no one landed in Duna. Stupid continuity. Um, uh, yeah, and then people on space stations, people doing stuff. They'll all die, because um, they've started, they've changed it so that the food and stuff is measured in liters as opposed to like days worth of fuel. So I no longer have um, like 600 days worth of fuel. I have 600 liters worth of food or whatever, which isn't great. Anyway, I need to change my Perry app so I don't burn up in the atmosphere or die from G-forces. Um, because I don't, I don't like dying from G-force damage. It's not a great way to die. Although there's not a huge amount of ways that it would be great to die. I don't know. Um, killed by lasers, fired into the sun, um, if I had to pick one, I don't know, I think it's something space related, although that would kind of tarnish the name, like, no one's actually died in space, they've died returning, like, the really, um, not actually the surprising unfamous one, but, um, the actual kind of interesting one is Columbia, the space shuttle Columbia, which actually burned up on re-entry, I believe, that's kind of, Obviously really horrible, but it's kind of a interesting spectacle, like a plane just like burning up, going like eight kilometers a second. That wouldn't be a... that'd be a cool story, if in heaven or whatever. Or hell, because of science. I'm gonna not say anything about heaven and hell. But I think it would be, um, at least kind of a cool way to die. You know, just freaking burning up planes. Anyway, hopefully Jebediah will not burn up, and, um... And hopefully next episode I will think of more things to talk about and not be harassed on Facebook. Or maybe I'll just log out of Facebook, but then my phone will go off. Maybe I'll just mute the Facebook. I'm not a smart guy. Um, anyway, we need to get a hopefully not burning before I deploy that parachute, because I'd rather like to get the um, bounty of science. I fire the Sabatrons just to slow myself down a little early, and as I just like firing them because I might as well. Um, although it would be cheaper to not because I can recover that fuel. I'm not very smart. Um, I don't know if I say that a lot, but I'm not. Um, anyway, let's hopefully land in the ocean and not smash into anything. I was looking at those islands. Those actually look really cool. I should visit them. 
I think one of them probably has a runway on it, yeah. And the other one's, uh, I don't know, I've never been to them. I haven't explored Kerbin enough, I don't think. Um, yeah, but uh, I think this is getting pretty close to the end of the episode, yeah. We just need to uh, land in the ocean and spend our science on some cool stuff. I want some bigger rockets. I want lots of things. I want to land on the moon. I want my um, satellite network to be better. I want a, I want a million dollars. Actually, a million pounds. That's more money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a pretty slow process just going down to the ground. Although it would be a... Actually, I'm going pretty fast. Seven meters a second is pretty hard to hit the ground. Um, it's because ferrum aerospace is much thinner atmospheres. Um, anyway, we are down and we have completed one of our missions to recover science from around the moon. That will give us lots of money, which is always good. I think it's something only about 15 grand, but it's still money. Um, and uh, a ton of science. We've got 240 science on that mission. That is a lot. That's, well, right now it's a lot. But um, yeah, um, eventually it will be like nothing because I have got an interstellar installed, which you haven't seen much of yet. Um, but uh, eventually there will be stuff like warp drive and cool stuff. Anyway, I'm going to get some bigger rockets, because let's face it, bigger rockets are better rockets. And for that, I will need bigger fairings. So I will find that. Um, it should be in aerodynamics? High altitude flight, maybe? Um, I could get some of those radiators and solar panels, but I don't really want them. What I could get docking. That could be useful. I should build a station. Um, or I could get big big fairings. I think that's what I'm going to go for. And there's wings. I could start making the planes and an abort system. That just seems very useful. Anyway, I will get that and then I will do things with it in the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This has been Chaos Me With Tape. I will see you next time.